This tutorial will show how to use the SAP 2000 Application Programming Interface, or API functions, to start SAP 2000, build a model, and run an analysis from an external application. In this case, we will use Excel in its Visual Basic for Applications language, or VBA, although almost any programming language can be used to access the SAP 2000 API functions. The SAP 2000 API license is available for all versions of the program. Our model for this tutorial will be a curved plate girder with fixed ends subjected to self-weight. Included with the SAP 2000 API license is documentation that describes all of the functions in detail. Chapters include an introduction, getting started, API functions, example code, and alphabetized list. For each function, detailed information on the syntax, the Visual Basic procedure, and the parameters is provided, along with remarks and sample code using VBA. We will control SAP 2000 from Excel using VBA. We will also define the geometry for the model using Excel. We start by defining a column for the x-coordinates of the girder. Next, we define a column for the y-coordinates. Lastly, we will define a column for the vertical displacements along the bottom of the girder, which will be extracted from the SAP 2000 analysis and written into Excel. The first X coordinate will be minus 70 feet. We will write an equation that adds a positive 10 feet to each additional x-coordinate, ending at positive 80 feet. For the y-coordinate, we will write a formula that divides the x-coordinate by 10 and then squares this result. The vertical displacements remain empty until the analysis is complete. Next, we will start our API function programming using the Visual Basic Editor provided with Excel. All of our coding will be contained in a single module. We will call this module SAP 2000 API. Before we can start coding though, we need to reference SAP 2000 so that the application and its API functions will be accessible to VBA. Now we can start adding our code. First, we add in all of the code that occurs prior to our first procedure, or code that has a module level scope. Here we declare our SAP object variable as an object type using the application and class type. We also declare any variables that will be used across multiple procedures. 
Next, we add in the code for our first sub-procedure, called SAP2000 Open. This procedure opens the SAP2000 program using API functions. Here we create an instance of the SAP2000 object, start the application, initialize a new model using pound-feet Fahrenheit units, and create a blank model using the file new blank function. Our second procedure is called SAP2000 build, which will build the model. We start by declaring all the variables used in this procedure, then create a coordinates object for our input geometry. The rows count command is an Excel command that returns the number of XY coordinate pairs. Next, we generate frame objects along the curve using the frame object add by coordinate function. Using the extrude frame to area linear function, we extrude the frame objects into area objects 10 feet tall. This function also removes the frame objects once the extrusion has occurred. Lastly, we set all six degrees of freedom to restrain for the four end joints. The third procedure we will define will be for running SAP2000. Again, we start by declaring the variables used in the procedure. Next, we save the model using the file save function, followed by the command to run the analysis. Once the analysis has been run, we first deselect all of the cases, and then select the analysis case for which we want output, which for this example is the dead case. With the case selected, we extract the joint displacements using the results joint displacement function. The last step in this procedure is to write the displacements for the joints along the bottom of the girder back into the Excel worksheet. The only displacement we are concerned with is the vertical displacement, or U3. The last procedure closes SAP2000. This is done using the application exit function. We will not resave the file. The last step is to set the objects equal to nothing. This is important to break the connection between your application and SAP2000. Scrolling up, we see that we have a total of four procedures, all contained within our module SAP2000 API. We are now ready to return to the worksheet. With our VBA code complete, we will now add buttons to our worksheet to trigger our procedures. On the assign macro form, the names of our four procedures are displayed. We will assign the SAP2000 open macro to the first button. The second button will be used to build the model. The third button will run the analysis. And the last button will close SAP2000. Four buttons have been created for our four procedures. We can now start SAP2000 from our Excel program.
With SAP 2000 now running, we return to Excel and click the Build Model button. First, the frame objects are created along the curve geometry and then extruded into the area objects that form the girder. Note that the joint restraints have been added at the ends. Also, the file is still untitled, as it will not be saved until we run the analysis procedure. We are now ready to run the analysis. Note that the vertical displacement column is blank. These cells will be filled in after the analysis. With the analysis complete, note that the file has now been named and saved. The vertical displacement at the origin is minus 0.1573. Remember this number for comparison on the worksheet. The displacement values are now displayed on the worksheet. The value at the origin matches that shown in SAP 2000. Even though SAP 2000 was activated from an external application using the API functions, all the SAP 2000 menu commands are still available and here we ask for displacement contours to be displayed. With the analysis complete and the desired results extracted back into Excel, the last step is to close the SAP 2000 program. In summary, SAP 2000's API functions provide a convenient way to link SAP 2000's powerful analysis, design, and graphic capabilities to other applications. Although this example used Excel in its VBA language, most major programming languages can be used to access these API commands. This concludes this tutorial.